Jack Shields, inventor, scientist, businessman. Jack has had a lifetime of illness and for years he's been fighting to get doctors to diagnose what he's got. I can remember hitting the desk of this doctor and telling him, you're not going to get me out of this hospital until I can go home and say what's wrong with me. He suffers from migraines so bad they affect his sight. A series of strokes have damaged his brain. His doctor said they couldn't help. So I went home that night with a lump in my throat. I just thought, well, this is it. Nine strokes, you know. Next one's going to kill me. But Jack wasn't prepared to die without a fight. He was sure the doctors had missed something. I thought some, perhaps migraine and these frequent strokes that my mother used to get were coupled together in some way. After searching the net, he did what his doctors had failed to do for years. He found out that he had a genetic condition called Cadacil, which he'd got from his mother. Cadacil is a hereditary disease affecting the blood vessels in the brain. Sufferers often have severe migraine headaches, sometimes with visual impairments called aura. They usually go on to have multiple strokes. For many, the prospect is of dementia and death. Around 100 families in Britain have a definite diagnosis of Cadacil, but that's probably the tip of the iceberg because it's often missed by doctors. I think we are running into thousands, especially when you consider that some families may have more than um, 10 members who are affected. So the, the scale of the problem is quite large. Jack believes as many as 40% of fatal strokes could be caused by Cadacil. Richard Bone from County Durham has suffered so many strokes they can't be counted. Ray's pudding coming down. Do you want one or two helps? Uh, three. Oh, three? Uh, Ooh, lad. Uh, what was that like? Lousy. Lousy. Oh, you burnt the last one. I burnt the last one, did I? <laughs> the first one he ever had when he was 40, we went to see a doctor. He said, you've had a mayor's stroke, you're only 40, you'll get over it. And that was it. Seventeen years later, Cadacil was diagnosed. If a family member has it, you've got a 50-50 chance of getting it yourself. But Richard's family is particularly unlucky. His grandmother had it. She passed it on to five of her eight children, including Richard's dad, Blackett. His family had even worse luck. Blackett passed it on to seven of his nine children, and Richard was one of them. There's no age limit to when it'll start, when it'll start affecting them, and it affects both male and female. It just pleases itself, really. The only treatment we've had is aspirin, nothing else. Jack's mobility has been impaired by the strokes and the effect of childhood TB. This souped-up wheelchair is his response. Every obstacle is a new challenge for Jack. After being diagnosed with Cadacil, he wasn't prepared to go away, take the aspirin and wait to die. Instead, he searched for a treatment. Jack made his fortune inventing and manufacturing infrared equipment, so he used his knowledge of science to find a way of increasing blood flow to the brain. Three years ago, he began taking L-arginine. It's an amino acid that opens up the blood vessels and is marketed as a natural alternative to Viagra. I don't get any migraines at all now. I don't get aura. Now I might get the beginnings of aura, which is always the start of a migraine. It's easy to detect. You see flashing lights or your vision becomes blurred and so on. I immediately take a dose of L-arginine and it clears it within three minutes. I'm absolutely certain that I wouldn't be here now if I wasn't taking this treatment. One, two, three. In January, Jack gathered some of the world's authorities on Cadacil at a seminar in Newcastle. His aim was to get them to accept that L-arginine worked. I'm fighting constantly against 
opposition by the medical profession. When I suggested that I had found a treatment for cancer, they didn't want to know. But doctors are beginning to take notice. I think knowing some of the literature where air arginine has been used for vascular disorders and uh, a couple of recent studies, uh, I think it might be useful. The Bone family's bad luck didn't stop at Richard and his six brothers and sisters. He had five children. Cadacil hit one of his sons and his daughter, Denise. She's cared for full time by her husband, Carl. Denise is 43. It's 10 years since she developed it, and she has deteriorated a lot quicker than her dad. Like many Cadacil sufferers, Denise and her dad have heightened emotional responses to everyday events. For Irene, there's the added burden of knowing that this genetic defect is passed down Richard's line. That was hard. It still is. It's the hardest thing to watch your own child going through what she's going through. You try to be a positive fellow, but inside it hurts. It hurts really bad. They don't know whether Cadacil has been passed to the newest generation. Mm, it's very frightening. Very. You're just frightened for the grandchildren. Up to now they've decided not to get tested, the ones that's old enough because I think that they uh, don't want to know what the future is that way. L-arginine may treat Cadacil, but it's not a cure. That's Jack's next target. He believes the answer lies in stem cell therapy. He's enlisted the help of a leading stem cell specialist and set up the Cadacil Trust. Through its helpline, he's found sufferers who are prepared to be donors. So I feel that the only way to be able to go ahead with this research in treating Cadacil would be for me to donate my embryos to use for research. Jack is impatient to get work started. It's there. It's just round the corner. We're almost there now. But we need some concerted effort and we need some finance putting it in the right place. A cure for Cadacil won't help those already damaged like Jack, but it could help the thousands silently carrying the rogue gene. It would be vindication for years of selfless battling by an enterprising and awkward man. I think it's, it's fantastic for what he's doing because he's got a big fight on his hand. He's a man who probably uh, you can't say no to. It drives me mad, yes. But I'm, I'm a very patient person and I won't be beaten.